Well, hey guys, I'm Chad with Take One Film and Video here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've got my good friend Tyler Hurth with Long Hollow Baptist Church. How you doing, Chad, Tyler? I'm good, I'm good. Well, we're really excited that we were able to partner with you guys on this really cool uh, upgrade, which is a long yeah. time in the making, oh, actually. Yes, absolutely. And so give us a little background, kind of starting from, you know, uh, around 2005 when we did the first sort of uh, iteration of, of video here. Uh, yeah, so in 2005, um, when they first built the Worship Center in now, we had some great people who were forward thinking and yeah. trying to make sure that we had a good system um, in place. Like put in um, a four camera system with a Grass Valley switcher, a 2ME Grass Valley switcher, and, um, and their primary goal in 2005 was iMac. Right. Um, just to shoot iMag, capture iMag, and be able to use some things later on for post if we needed to. It really wasn't streaming back then. Right. The There's no yeah. streaming back then. It was just what's in the room is what mattered. Yeah. Um, but it was a great system for that. Um, but quickly, as things started going a little bit more into, we started web streaming, we started putting more things online, started doing more things for social media, we quickly outgrew the system. Because um, it was just, uh, we had a 16 by 16 router. We had. We were using a lot of oxes to feed things. Just we were trying any way we could to right. to really get sources where we need to get them and and um, cut different feeds and things like that. So we quickly ran out of space. <laughs> no, I understand it. And obviously now we're making a new investment into new technologies. And so where does it go from 2019 for the next 15 years? Kind of what is, what's the overall goals for Long Hollow? Um, so our goals are we would love, um, and, and kind of thinking of where we're going, of we would love to be able to be 4K at some point if we needed to be, or at least capture in 4K, yeah. um, and be HDR, mm -hmm. um, and as well as you know, everything else going out, we wanted to be able to 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 you know move with the way technology is going and have the and have an easier way to get there, yeah. rather than switching an entire system out later. We it get to a point where we're just upgrading a few things or turning 4K on on the camera or you know doing some things like that where it's a more flexible system for the future. Absolutely, and a lot of the equipment that we chose kind of gave us that path, mm -hmm. and I know we had that discussion. We even started in a 3G environment, which was a, mm -hmm. you know even a little step into it already yes. because that gives you the platform to go HDR, mm -hmm. and that kind of gives you that platform to, to do 4K and other things like that. Right. Uh, but you know, a few a year or two ago, I guess before, we actually went ahead and upgraded the switcher as well yes. to kind of help prepare us for that. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about uh, that as well. Um, so we, um, we had the, um, we had the chance. Kayak. To, it was yeah, a we kayak. had a Grass Valley kayak, um, and had the chance to do an upgrade mm -hmm. um, through Grass Valley. And so we went with the um, Carrera system with an uh, uh, S frame, um, and so that gave us a two ME switcher, and um, which was pretty lateral as far as the switcher goes, except for Grass Valley has a thing called double take, that allows you to split your MEs, and basically you kind of have four MEs that share the same amount of keyers. Um, and so we were able to get a 4ME switcher basically out of that 2ME package. Okay. Um, and so that allowed us to do a little bit more, have more some more flexibility in how we were switching mm -hmm. um, and um, give us some more, you know, flexibility with feeds and maybe some double box effects or things like that that we really needed the room. Um, to move into. So talk about that a little bit more. I mean, as far as your, your general workflow now, because, you know, as opposed to 2005, now we do have the streaming. Mm -hmm. You have a second campus now that we can talk about in a few minutes, but that's another aspect of it. And then, of course, you have your, you know, your screens like you, you always had as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you you do all that through through one switcher, one TD. So uh, kind of explain that workflow <laughs> a little bit, you know, on yeah. a, uh, um, maybe on a layman's level, but just let us know <laughs> kind of how you um, Utilize yeah. the switcher. For yeah, that. so basically what I normally will do is my preview program mm -hmm. ME is basically just set up for like our streaming feed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm cutting wider shots to. It's what I'm, you know, cutting um, in like our online intros and outros with or things like that. Um, then on my first ME, I'm doing the screen feed. So I'm separating them out um, and doing tighter shots on the screens, things that are a little bit more geared toward the room um, so that they're not getting all the wide shots and all the things that, you know, basically defeats the purpose of my right. Mac. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, um, and then for my double take MEs, I'm using one ME that basically feeds the web to where if I need to cut away from a video we're showing or I need to cut to something else really quick, I can on that secondary ME 
Um, and then I've got a mic, or I've got an effects in me for double box effects for some things that we'll use for maybe we're doing a hit out in the courtyard or somewhere else in the church to where we're doing a welcome and they need to talk back and forth or uh, we even did one from camp this year. So. Okay, <laughs> that's fantastic. And, and so moving forward, I mean, from the camera side, we went with the UC4000s mm -hmm. and we looked at several different manufacturers, but ultimately the Panasonic cameras gave you all of the future feature uh, Future features, features, that's yeah. a hard one to say, isn't yeah. it? Um, uh, basically, they were ready to go out of the box yes. and there wasn't like licensing, yeah, temporary, right. long-term licenses or things. So if you wanted to do something today, uh, say, you know, we just wanted to do a one-off 4K or a one-off HDR yeah. project, just turn it on and go. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call up and deal with yes. the logistics of licensing. And that was a big thing for us, just being able to, to, looking toward the future, it's like we've made this purchase and now we've got everything we wanted mm -hmm. just there. And so it's not calling ahead and being like, hey, well, how much is this license? Or how much is this to turn this on later? Can we rent this license for a weekend? Or it's like, it's there. So it's, we're ready to go no matter you know what we want to be yes. out of that camera. So it's, Absolutely. it was a good, good choice for us there. And so they have all those feature capabilities, including like things that we haven't really even talked about, like 12 gig and IPIO. Mm -hmm. The great thing is they're all set up for that yes. in the future. So as the technology, everybody kind of figures out where we're going, mm -hmm we should be set for, yes. for some time to go. Now, you know, the, the backbone of the whole system, uh, of course, is your router. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's one of those things that are overlooked. We, we talk about, you know, switchers and cameras and things like that, but that backbone is uh, not only important as far as getting signals to and from and moving things around, mm -hmm. but also pre-planning it so that you have room to grow. Because, I mean, not only is it the backbone, but it's also probably your, the most substantial investment. <laughs> yes, it is. Financially speaking, yeah. that you're gonna make in the whole system. Yeah. So uh, the EQX16 was the mm -hmm. system that we ended up going with. Yes. And uh, I believe that's a has a capability of a 288 squared, mm -hmm. I think, as it sits right now. It and we're not there. No, we're not. But, but that's a good thing. Yeah, we've got room to grow. We've got room to add. And, um, and that was one looking into it of, we had the ability to go with mm -hmm. some smaller routers that could fit our what we've got now, but I really wanted to be able to expand because we, as I've been here for as long as I have, I know that we don't stop expanding yeah. <laughs> and we don't stop adding more things or, hey, we need to do this this week. Or it's, we needed that flexibility. Yes. And so the EQX16 really gave us that ability to, if I need to add more cards later on, I can. Yeah. And I have more inputs and outputs that I can add um, as we grow um, and as we add campuses or add whatever we need to add, venues, I've got the room. Yes, and you guys already had a great uh, audio backbone here. You guys uh, have always uh, done really uh, great. You got a great audio crew, but mm -hmm. to be able to bring some of that in, in the routing world is fairly new technology. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we've incorporated this as well. Yes. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you incorporate. Is it in Maddie or Dante? Mm -hmm. what, what, are you, what are you running right now? Um, so everything is Maddie. Um, all of our um, audio consoles are all running on Maddie mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so the Everts router gave us the ability to have eight Maddie streams um, on it. So we have um, any of our um, video input sources um, that can run into that and hit our audio consoles through routing. Um, our comm system, which is Dante, but we're converting it to Maddie, but it's sitting in there so that we can ship those audio signals around. Um, and so anything that's basically hitting the router, coming from the audio consoles or from video or anything like that, we're able to route around to anywhere we need it to go. Um, and so we're doing multiple destinations where we have different mixes going different places, different um, audio feeds. Um, we're sending you know, eight channels of audio to our other campus um, that we're able to be pretty flexible of flipping around what feeds they're getting as well, but they're getting some different, um, some different audio channels up there for, to help their mix up there um, for the sermon. And then um, it's been a huge thing to have calm in there as yes. well of just shipping those feeds back and forth and, and just making it so easy for me to get things in and out of there of not having to try to patch things around or try to make <laughs> things work. Or, well, and you got the it, magnum control surface. It kind of brings yes. it all in together in just a one interface. Yes. And that really is nice when you're dealing mm -hmm. with all of those things, you can move it around where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so from an expansion standpoint, I want to talk a little bit uh, before we finish up here about Gallatin because mm -hmm. Gallatin is about what, 350 some odd mm -hmm. seat, um, campus that's about, um, I don't know, about 15 miles from here. Mm -hmm. And so um, ultimately there's a, a new uh, 
a, a new building in the works uh, also that's going to be uh, something that you're going to be moving into. So Gallatin's sort of like a small uh, preview of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And and so this is where uh, all of the technology with the, uh, the with the Ebert's routing and so forth is going to help you kind of expand to make um, those remote campuses actually integrate as one, mm -hmm. I, I think is ultimately should be the, the goal, right? Yes, yes. So we would love for those campuses to be able to, to act as one and be able to route things around and be able to talk to the other campus, um, as well as you know, stream some multiple things up to there yes. um, as well. Um, and so our what we would love to see in Gallatin is, which another reason of doing the cameras, doing 4K HDR is, we do a center lockdown shot in Gallatin, and we'd love to see that that center shot, which is a wider shot, be 4K HDR, to really make that center shot pop. Absolutely, there's always this controversy about 4K. Is like when is it usable and so forth? And I can tell you from experience that. Uh, you know, 4K really matters when you start getting into bigger yes. surfaces. And so it, it's funny, moving back a few years before we made the upgrade, you were standard definition with an HD center shot, yeah. you know, which was, you know, a, a lot better. But now we, we have the capability of being now all 1080p mm -hmm. HD with a 4K center shot. And, and uh, this, you know roughly what the size is there. It's a, it's a large screen, but it's scaled so that the, uh, so that the pastor actually looks uh, actual he, size. Yeah, he, on the we scale him to where he's about a foot and a half taller than he actually oh, okay. is. He so probably he's likes about, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just of just the perspective in the room, if he's a little taller, he looks natural. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've tried to scale him a little bit bigger, and he looks about like he normally is here. Um, and, and I got to mention that the camera that we ended up sort of stumbling on in this whole uh, process was the UE150, mm -hmm. also Panasonic. And, you know, you and I have had a lot of experiences out in, you know, in the freelance world dealing with PTCs. And, and we know that they're great. You can put them in nice places, but they never really kind of hold up at the quality level that yeah. you're going to see your broadcast cameras. Mm -hmm. UE150 was surprisingly it was. Uh, not that, did, did not have those problems with the UE150. Yeah. It looked great. And I, I love the fact that it, it had the upgrade capabilities. It has the, uh, you know, the HDR has the 4K path mm -hmm. and even has the dynamic range stretch that we already use on the UC4000s. So it looks like your broadcast camera. It does. Yeah, I was so impressed bringing it in because when you first said a PTZ, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, probably not going like, to work. Well, this may not look as good, but when we brought it in and demoed it, I was blown away by how good it looked and how much it matched with the, the UC4000s. Um, and that was a big win for us, just you know, budget-wise too, because it's we were looking at doing a bot, one of the Panasonic box cameras, um, but this came in much cheaper, and it gave us the same result. Absolutely. Well, it's been a very exciting project, and, and we're very thankful that uh, you trusted us to let us partner up with you guys to, to be a part of this. And so I'm uh, really excited we were able to share with you guys kind of a little bit about Long Hollow's vision as far as how they're utilizing uh, uh, their video system. And, you know, every, everyone has um, the different goals of their, their ministries, whether it's uh, small and large. And so uh, we would love to be able to walk you through that path. If you guys want to give us a call, 1-877-81-TAKE-1. I'd be happy to talk to you a little bit more about Long Hollow, uh, what we did here, and how we can apply that uh, all that knowledge and the things that we learned here uh, to help you with your projects as well. So give us a shout. You can also email us at mail at takeone.tv. Well, Tyler, thanks so much, man. Yeah, we thanks, really Chad. appreciate it. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Absolutely. Hit that like button, subscribe to us, and uh, we'll see you again soon.